Hello, welcome to Rising Technologies. I am Harish. This is part 12 of Core Java video tutorial. In this session, we are going to learn about static versus instance members, difference between static and instance members, an example where static members can be used, and the concept of static block in a class. A class contains few data members and few member functions. Data members are called as fields, member functions are called as methods. Both these fields and methods can be declared as static or non-static. When any member within a class is declared with static modifier, then such a member is called as a static member. And when no such modifier is present, then the member is called as instance member or simply non-static member. So a non-static member or instance member belongs to a specific instance of the class. That means if I create three instances of a class, then I will have three set of instance members in the memory. Whereas there will be only one copy of static member no matter how many instances of a class I declare. Look at this simple piece of program. I have a sample class. Within the sample class, I have these two fields. One of the field is declared with a static modifier. So we can say this is a static data member or a static field. And this is instance field. We have just learned that instance member belongs to specific instance of a class, but static member do not belongs to any instance there is only one copy of the static member that will be shared by all the instances of this class now look at this main program i have created three instances of this sample class like object one object two and object three and there are three instances so these are the three instances in the memory which are referred by object one object two and object three you can clearly see each and every instance of this sample class has a separate copy of this member that is A. That is why it is called as instance member. But there is only one copy of this variable B. And all these instances are going to share the same variable. That's, that is the concept that we have just learned when object of a class are declared no separate copy of static variable is made. Instead, all instances of the class share the single static member. So in simple words, we can say instance member belongs to specific instances. That's why these members are instance dependent. Whereas the static member do not belong to a specific instance. That's why we can say static members are instance independent. Now look at this piece of code. I have removed all the instances declaration. That means I do not have any instance of this class sample. So there is no existence of this A because there is no object. But you can clearly see B is still there. So B. If class is there, B will be there. That means this B depends on class only, not instances. That's why we can also say static members are class members, whereas non-static members are instance or object members. We have just learned about static data member. Now let's have a look at static methods. So when a method is declared as static, that method can be called using class name only. We don't need any specific instance to call static methods. Now look at this class. Again, I have a sample class which contains two methods, method one and method two. This method two is declared with the static modifier. So we can say this method is class member whereas this method is instance member. In order to call method one, you must have an instance of sample class. But in order to call this method two, you don't need an instance. You can just call this method by specifying class name dot method name. Now look at this main program. I have called this method to like sample, sample is the name of my class. So sample dot method to. So this call will be successfully executed. 
because this can be called without any instance as this method 2 is a static method and static method nothing to do nothing to nothing to do with an uh, instance of this class but if i try to call this method that is method 1 the same way i have called method 2 but compiling this program will generate compile errors why because we cannot call this method 1 without an instance that means if i want to call this method method 1 i must have an instance of the sample class let's have a practical look at this concept to speed the things up i have already typed the code i have created the sample class within the sample class i have this method 1 and method 2 method 1 is instance method method 2 is static method and we have just learned that to call a static method we really don't need any instance of the class we can just specify the class name and method name let's start to compile this look at this program is successfully compiled let's try to execute this program and look at the output it's saying static method call that means this method we have just called from main without having a specific instance of this class now let's try to call this method method 1 the same way we have called method 2 just change this to to method 1 now compile this program and there is a compile error so we cannot call a non-static method without having any instance of this class so if i want to call this i must declare an instance of this sample class so sample object is equivalent to new sample and using this instance now i'm going to call the method one let's try to compile okay program is successfully compiled now let's try to run and look at the output it's saying instance method call so we have just learned the difference between static data member and static methods static data member belongs to class only static data member do not belong to specific instance there is only one copy of this data member that will be shared by all the instances and non-static data member have a separate copy per instance and if you have a static method we can call this method by specifying class name only but in order to call non-static method we must have an instance of this class now there are several restrictions on the method which is declared as static method the first restriction static methods can only directly call other static methods Static methods can only directly access static data. That means this static method. If I try to access this variable B within this class, let's try to assign something and let's compile this. Program is successfully compiled. But what if I try to access this A and try to assign some value to get this? This A is an instance field. And this method is static method so we cannot access any non-static member from a static method that means i cannot call method one from method two similarly i cannot access this variable a in this method if i try to compile this look at the error non-static variable a cannot be referred from a static context and that's logical because this a depends on a specific instance but this method can be called without any instance so we cannot access any member that is instance dependent from a method that is instance independent so this method 2 is instance independent so i cannot access this a now what if i try to call this method from method 2 again we will get the same error non-static method method one cannot be referred from a static context and again the reason is simple this method is instance dependent so we cannot access this method without having any instance so but from a instance method 
I can access static field as well as instance field that means within this method 1 I can access this A as well as B even I can call this method 2 from this method 1. There is one more restriction on static method that they cannot refer to this or super in any way. There are two keywords in Java. This keyword can be used inside any instance method to refer to the current object who has invoked that method. Similarly, the super keyword relates to inheritance and this will be described in the inheritance chapter. So we cannot use these two keywords within this method too. Okay, but we can access them within this method 1 because method 1 belongs to a specific instance. Similarly, this is super and this keyword also belongs to instances of current object as well as the parent class object. Let's have a practical look where we can make use of static members. Now look at this circle class. Within this class, I have these two fields, pi and radius. There is a constructor which receives radius as a parameter and it assigns the parameterized value to this field that is radius. There is one more method, get area method. This method returns the area of the circle using the formula. Now, pi as well as radius, both are instance field. That means if I declare 10 instances of this class, there will be 10 copies of radius as well as 10 copies of pi. Look at my main program. Within this main program, I have created two instances of this circle class by specifying different different radius. So C1 and C2, these are the instances referred by these reference variable. So you can clearly see this is the first instance that contains radius as a 8 and pi is 3.1416. Within second instance which is referred by C2, there is a value of 7 within this radius field and pi is 3.1416. Now, no matter how many objects, how many instances I declare of this circle class, the value of pi will remain same within each and every instance. So there is no sense declaring this field which depends on instances or the copies of this field will be the equal to the copies of instances. So instead of declaring this pi as an instance field, what we can do? We can declare this pi as a static field. We have just learned that static field, there is only one copy of the static field in the memory that will be shared by all the instances of this class. And this is non-static. So this radius variable will be declared per instance basis. That means if I declare two instances of this circle class, there will be two copies of radius. Each instance of this circle class is going to have its unique copy of this radius variable. But look at the pi. Pi is not declared per instance basis. There is only one copy of this pi variable and this variable will be shared by these both instances. Not only these two, if I declare hundreds of instances of this circle class, still there will be only one copy of this pi, but there will be hundred copies of this radius variable. Let's try to create this program. Just to speed the things up, I have already typed this program. So this is our class, circle class that contains pi and radius constructor and get area method and there are two instances but currently these both fields are declared as instance field that means there will be there will be two copies of radius and two copies of pi let's compile this and run this output is successfully displayed and output is correct as well but currently our program has declared our instances something like this. There are two instances, there are two copies of this pi, but there is no sense declaring this pi variable per instance basis. I want this variable to be declared within only one copy and that copy will be shared by all the instances of this circle class. So all I'm going to do is just declare this variable with this static modifier. So let's change this declaration to static double pi. Now if I run this, 
See, there is no difference in the output, but currently our instances of this circle class is declared something like this. There is only one copy of y, that copy will be shared by all the instances of the circle class. So in any scenario, if you have a particular field that do not have a separate value for each instance, so we can declare that field as a static field so that compiler can maintain only one copy of such a variable, that copy will be shared by all the instances of this class. Now the next concept is static block. So static block is used to initialize a static field. In our previous session, we have learned about constructors. Constructors are used to initialize data member. But basically constructors are used to initialize instance data member or you can say instance field. But if you want to initialize static fields, you can make use of this static block. The static block doesn't have any access modifier and this block called only once even before any instance of the class is created. Now look at this piece of program. I have this pi variable but this variable is still uninitialized and if I want to initialize this pi variable to 3.14, initializing this variable within a constructor will repeat the initialization per object basis. We know that this pi is going to have the same value no matter how many instances of this class is created. So instead of initializing this variable within an instance constructor, we can initialize this variable within a block declared with the static keyword. So this block is called as static block and I am making use of this block to initialize this pi variable. We have just learned that this block executes only once no matter how many instances of this class is created. Even this block executes before you create any instance of this class. But this constructor executes per instance basis. Now if I declare 10 instances of this circle class, this circle constructor will also be executed at 10 times but this static block will be executed only once. Now let's have a practical look at this concept. Suppose I don't want to initialize this pi variable here. I want to perform maybe I want to perform some calculation or using some expressions I want to initialize this so I can make use of this static block and within the static block I'm going to initialize this pi variable. Changing our program this way will not change the output of our program but initially our server class is going to, was going to have both the field as instance field but currently this server class has only one instance field and one static field and we are making use of the static block to initialize this by. Thank you for watching. For more details, visit our official site that is www.risingtechnologies.in. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel.